Welcome into the Irish NFL show, reviewing all the NFC divisions. In this episode, we're going to review the NFC North. I'm delighted to have Colin Cronin, Connor Brophy with me to discuss this division. And this one is, I suppose, to Connor's heart because it is the division in which his favourite team is beloved Chicago Bears and a part of. And we're going to start there, Connor. Why not? Let's start with the with the Chicago Bears. I was running through the uh, the free agency acquisitions today, and I gave up trying to remember them all because there's been so many and, and some really really strong players that were brought in, a real aggressive nature to the polls. Tenure this year in terms of GM, opening day of free agency, really went in gung-ho to bring a lot of players in. And I suppose the Bears have a lot of positions of need, positions of needs, and obviously then Justin Fields as well as obviously the question mark in terms of where he is in his development. I'll hand it over to you because you're, you are our Bears fan here. So where are you Where are you standing within the, the yeah, polls right. so far? Where to start, as you say, I have a lot of skin in the game here and uh, and, and a lot of opinions to share. So I'll, I'll, I'll try and, and, and summarize it nicely. But I mean, the Bears were, were the NFC North Benevolent Society last year. Let's, let's not forget that. The only team in the NFL not to win a, a, a single divisional game. Like handed out all six wins to, to, to other teams in the division. Like, let's not forget that the Bears had the worst record in the, in the NFL. They got the number one pick for a reason. And um, they kind of quiet tanked in, in a funny way. You know, they sort of self destructed on the defensive side of the ball, you know, handing away Robert Quinn, you know, tr- trading players through the season, you know, clearly signaling that they were, they were breaking it down and starting again. And, and that had problems on the other side of the ball then as so well. Just couldn't play complementary football. And, and although they were competitive in a lot of the games they lost, they still lost 10 in a row. Um, and it was a pretty unwatchable stretch at times, punctuated, obviously, by the brilliance of, of Justin Fields, particularly with his legs. Um, we need to see a lot more of him using the arm, obviously, this year. And, and that's the big thing. And um, if Ryan Poles is kind of trying to to flatter the Eagles by by comparison, you know, imitation being the, the most sincere form of flattery, you know, the, if you squint a little bit, you can kind of see it starting to take shape and that clearly he's building through the through the trenches. Bears added some monsters on both sides of the ball, both in free agency and, and, and through the draft. Excited to see how Darnell Wright does. You know, obviously during the offseason, you start looking at the tape and you're imagining, oh, these definite starters, these guys are definitely going to tear it up when, when they hit the field. And, and let's hope that turns out to be the case. Um, also ho- hoping that just the, the fields will take the, the Jalen Hurst-like step uh, that, that he did at a similar stage of his career in Philadelphia. But if not, and this is why I like what they did around and what Pose did around the number one pick and um, trading with, with Carolina, getting DJ Moore when there just weren't a lot of, you know, top level receivers available and um, managing to land a guy like that, you know, put that weapon out there for, for Justin Fields um, and, and still have the capital for next year, given what they acquired in return, that they can take another swing at it if this doesn't turn out to be the year for Justin Fields and he doesn't make the breakthrough on top of the breakthrough that he made last year. And I'm not dismissing that, but... You know, you're not going to win with a quarterback who, whatever the brilliance with his legs, he, he has to be more than a running threat. He has to be a genuine dual threat. Otherwise, they're going to be in the market for, for one of the exciting players that we've seen in 2024. You know, I'd love to see Fields succeed. Don't get me wrong. Um, and you're getting the uh, the OTA reports that himself and, and and DJ Moore have struck up that relationship and that they're they're flying and training. I know we'll, we'll, we'll get to the uh, NFC East at, at some point and you're hearing similar things about Daniel Jones and, and, and Darren Waller in New York. And that might be quickly forgotten when the season starts and, and reality intervenes. But look, so far, so good. Do I expect the Bears to challenge for the NFC North title or to make the playoffs this year? Bluntly, no, I don't. Um, I don't see a Jacksonville Jaguars like resurgence it's just too big a climb from where they were there's a massive rebuilding job that's foundations have definitely been laid but i think this year is is a year of progress not a year where they're where where i expect them to be anywhere near the playoffs where do you stand on justin fields as a whole because there's a lot of bears fans who i know that you can't even get into that conversation with them they're just so bought into justin fields just not even it's we had a live show in january in captain america's and that came up as in the nature of the show and some of the questions and the Bears fans in the audience were, no, 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 it's the problem is the fact that he hasn't got any functional players around him. The offensive line was so poor, but it was games in the fourth quarter last year, as you touched on, they lost a lot of close games where when the speed of the game play, you know, kind of sped up and, and he was in a position to go down and drive down to win the games, he couldn't do it. Is that a part of the steep learning curve he's experiencing as a quarterback or is it because of what was around him? Yeah, well, c- kind of all of the above, Brian, for me. Like, you yeah. can't judge a quarterback without judging the situation. We've we've seen that time and time again. Guys who've been written off, who just happen to be in a terrible situation, 
can be can be can be the guy when when they're in a good situation. Ryan Tannehill probably being one outstanding example. Geno Smith, who, who we talked about in the NFC West preview, probably being another one. Um, and you can't judge Fields without looking at the awful situation he was in last year with a you know a non-functioning offensive line with you know nobody to throw to at half the time. Now against that, there were times where he still did the things that you expect a second-year quarterback to do. Unfortunately, hanging onto the ball too long. You know, he was the most sacked quarterback in the NFL, partly because of the offensive line, partly because he held onto the ball too long, and um, had some bad turnovers. Ball security was a bit of an issue in terms of you know coughing it up when he was hit, but then he was hit an awful lot as well. So that's not all on him. And um, we can't judge him properly until we see what he has around him this year. But what he has around him this year is an awful lot better than what he had last year. It's certainly projecting to be an awful lot better. Um, so there's no... I, I think we're removing the excuses, bluntly. It, it, it's up to him to perform. Like I say, I'm still excited by what I've seen, and I still think there's a lot of upside. It was all about what a, what an amazing runner he was, what a transcendent player with with with, with ball in hand taken off. And, 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 you know, the highlight reel is amazing. And there were some good throws as well. Um, but, you know, you'd like to see that Ohio State pocket passer that we saw, you know, light up college football tra- transfer to the NFL. And we haven't seen that yet. And, and, and unless we do next year, I, I suspect Ryan Poles will, will be quick enough to move on and won't be sentimental. And um, again, you know, back to where we started, perhaps modeling himself on, on what Howie Roseman had to do in Philadelphia, moving on from Carson Wentz when it was clear that he wasn't going to be the person to take them to the promised land. Colin, it's a fair reflection. Are you, where are you standing on the Bears? And I know you always kind of preach that if it's not the quarterback, you move on quickly and you you, you move on quickly. I'm sorry, you move on, you take your, your bumps in the road. And, and the Bears have stockpiled really well with the Panthers trade for next season. So even if, if that's just, it's, it's a two-way street here, if they are successful this season, they can only improve on, what, on the season that's ahead of them. Or do you, do you have to reconvene in terms of the quarterback situation? You, you're in on Justin Fields, I imagine, and the way you were with, with Jalen Hurts, yeah? I, I am. I'm not as high on Fields as I was on Hertz. I oh, I really truly believed Hertz is just his his leadership ability and his character were so evident. Um, when when you saw that interview, um, after the cha- the the championship game, right when he got pulled at halftime, and you saw the kid interviewed, uh, I I was in awe from that moment. I knew he was going to be a superstar because guys respond to that. When you saw him wish nothing but the best for his t- his teammate who had just come into the game and won it and just celebrate like it was so obvious right so anyway park jalen hurts jo- justin fields i am i'm high on him because i think he can do it and i think when we spoke to uh matt verderam who you know has been around the game a, a long time and I, I would uh you know respect his opinion he talked about how Talent play is obviously um, the the most important part, but luck and landing spot are so, so important, right? Because, and he he went with Patrick Mahomes. What if Patrick Mahomes had ended up in Chicago? Would he be a fantastic player? Yes, he would. But would he be Patrick Mahomes, the transcendent talent who has the potential to be the greatest quarterback we have potentially ever seen in the NFL? No, he, he wouldn't um, because he wouldn't have Andy Reid and he, he wouldn't have all the talent that, that he had with Travis Kelsey and Tyree Kill that allowed him to develop and the offensive line that they put in place. So it's so important that teams do try to, you know, um, support and develop their young QBs and teams, I think, are getting better at that and realizing what they, they need to invest in it. I think the Bears have done a you know, a, a job this offseason. Is it perfect? No. But is it much better than it was? Absolutely. Um, I mean, I, like last year, they, they rolled the dice and it was probably a little too much to, that they paid for, say, Claypool. Um, but Claypool can be WR3 now. I mean, he's a decent WR3 to have. Um, and when you kind of say Darnell Mooney, when you have DJ Moore, you've options there. Um so I, I expect them to, to take a, a step, um, but it, it's a big season for, um, I think, th- they need to show progress, but Justin Fields is the one who needs to show the most progress because they do have the ammunition if needs be. And remember, he is not their guy. He, he is not the guy for, for this GM. So they're going to get a kind of a... a, a you know, a pass on it if they decide to move on from fields. 
um, they'll be able to say he wasn't our guy you know now give us the opportunity to get our guy in and things will turn around but i expect the bears um to be better than they were last year albeit that's akin to winning a taller than danny devito contest <laughs> You're, Brian, you're you're on mute. I'm back now. I was just <laughs> reading off a list of players in which the Bears have taken in in free agency. I'll, I'll start again. And they're all valid players because they were all really productive for the teams last year. Edwards for the Eagles, Edmonds from the Bills, Nate Davis, offensive guard from the Titans, the Marcus Walker Titans, defensive line, Travis Homer, interest from Seattle, Dante Ford, uh, running back from the Panthers. And as the list goes on, Robert Tanya is one more I'll throw in there. The reason I say is, and Connor, I'll, I'll just quickly finish with you on the Bears. There's so many good players that brought in in their own way who've been really good for their teams over the past few years that have, I suppose, found their way into free agency and got the contracts. But the Bears are likely could win a lot of games next year. May not make the playoffs, but be really competitive and get over the line in those games in which they lost this season. Putting them in a bit of a quandary situation because if they are a little bit unsure of the quarterback situation, they may have won a number of games to take themselves out of sweepstakes. And maybe that's where that Panthers number one pick would be vital and the additional second round pick that they have the the, I suppose, the ammo to go up and go up the board next year potentially and again i suppose they were the most aggressive movers in the sense they went back to nine this year it could be the other way around next year and they could be moving up to one or two yeah in a funny way brian as you say it almost the worst result is that they end up in a kind of a nine and eight or miss the playoffs eight and nine type scenario you see a little bit of up and down from fields and you're not quite sure and then as you say you're in the position where do we use this capital to add one or two more weapons and hope that he's the guy? Or, you know, you'd nearly be better off in a situation where it doesn't quite pan out for him. Um, now, we spent a lot of time talking about the offense, of course. Like, there are two things that you associate with Chicago football. It's smash mouth running game and defense. And we haven't talked about the defensive side of the ball at all. Iberflus is a defensive coach. The, the, the record in Indianapolis was putting teams on the field that weren't necessarily laden down with top-tier talent but, you know, producing solid defensive efforts every year, top 10 defensive efforts every year. The Bears obviously traded Roquan Smith last year, traded Robert Quinn, got rid of Khalil Mack in the offseason, so they were never going to be competitive on that side of the ball. The secondary, I think, was better than it played last year. You you, you can't have a good-looking secondary if you, you're not putting pressure on the passer at all. You're just you're, you're going, to, going to be put under all sorts of pressure, and, and, and no defensive backs in the world are going to be able to cope with what the Bears were facing last year because they weren't getting any pressure on the passer from the front four at all because they didn't have the players to do it but I liked what I saw of Jaquan Brisker last year I liked what I saw of Kyler Gordon you know I think with what they put in place this year they're going to be a lot more competitive on that side of the ball but again you know we need to see something from from Flues here and from the defensive side of the ball in terms of really making a big difference there it, it's not all about talent it's also about coaching you know we talk about draft and develop as being the only sustainable path to success and yet we're so high on on who people draft and, and hitting on draft picks what happens when you get those people in the building and how you develop them is what ultimately decides whether you're going to be a competitive football team and, and that's another thing we've got to see this year from from chicago and I, I'm, I'm hoping to see big improvement on what we saw last year because that's what's going to keep them in games Kind of a final point on the Bears. Yeah, just on the 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 Bears and, and the piece that would probably concern me in terms of the the defensive side of the ball. It, then you know, Connor's touched on a lot of the points, but just in terms of the, I, the improvement, you, you have to have a pass rush. You have to have a pass rush in the NFL, and the Bears had twenty sacks last year, and um, and the the bot, bottom of the pile and. It's tough to see while the trenches have been reinforced they, on the edge. It's difficult to see where they where the sacks are going to to come from, and and that is a piece that will be interesting. And I think um, where Eberflus is going to have to earn his money is finding a way uh, to allow his players uh, to to get to the opposing QB because sacks are you know fundamental to changing. Um, the rhythm to disrupting your opponent, and ultimately that is something that the the Bears are are going to need to do. And so I, again, we've talked about it, you know, in um, some of the other podcasts, Brian, about the players that are still on the market. Could the Bears look to perhaps bring somebody in, in particularly in that area, 
that might be something that they might look to do or you know maybe uh Everflus will look at other other options and other ways to scheme up um kind of pressure on opposing qbs but that is a piece that they absolutely fundamentally have to improve on still a bit of cap space as well to play with i think bears fans are quietly optimistic i think about the upcoming season and we spent 15 minutes on the bears so i think it's fair we just move on to your teams 